Hello friend, this is Ryan Hicks of TalkToProfit.com and today I want to talk to you about how the people who you associate with will either bring you up or drag you down. In my book, Co-Creators with God, I deal with one of the issues of people excusing inopportune fellowship, where they're fellowshipping with unrighteousness. Their, their light is spending time with darkness. And one of the excuses commonly given is that, well, Jesus hung around publicans and sinners and prostitutes. But I deal within this book about how, and this is just one little tiny part of the book, overall book is about creating your reality with God. But I deal with how that statement about Jesus was an accusation against him. It was blasphemy against him. It wasn't the truth. They also said in that exact same sentence that he was a drunk and a glutton. These were accusations against him, accusing him of sin, not some statements of facts about him. And as I deal with in the book, when he went to Zacchaeus, which is one of the things they were speaking evil of him for doing, look at Zacchaeus. He was willing to give up half of his wealth to the poor. He wanted to restore anyone he wronged. That was a repentant man who had confessed and forsaken his sins. He wanted to do what was right. He wasn't someone that was still going out cheating people and harming people and not being charitable. He had made a change and repented. Now, too often in life, people are wanting to associate with people simply because they have time invested in them. Well, I've been, I've been friends with them since I was a child. That's fine. I'm not telling you to give up your, your friends. But if they're tearing you down, if they're dragging you down, you need to make some changes. You know, the scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. When you're associating with people who do evil and are contrary to your faith and hope and peace and love and joyful, positive attitude, it, they're going to drag you down. I've talked about this over the years, but people think that because they're doing right and they're living right, that they can go into the den of iniquity and fellowship with evil people, and they're going to come out unscathed. This would be like a healthy person going into a hospital full of people with the flu and then wondering why they got the flu. Your good health does not project onto others and make them healthy and make you immune from their disease, their illness. Because sin and corruption is very much like a virus. It spreads. And the way you avoid it is by not being around it in the first place. Don't put yourself in that position. And too many people put themselves in positions to be tempted that aren't even caused by anything else besides themselves and their own foolish choices. And when you're associating with people who don't have your best interest at heart, who are doing evil and aren't acting right in the world, they're going to bring you down. They're going to speak negatively. They're going to talk about negative things. And why do you want to associate that? What are you getting out of that? And ask people this sincerely. Now, if they're trying to better themselves, that's great. But I know from being around in life, the average person is not trying to better themselves. They're, they may talk about it and they may say it, but there's zero effort going into it at all. So you need to be real clear. If you're going to be around somebody and they say they're better than themselves, are they really doing anything each day to better themselves? Or is that just something to appease you because you're the positive one? But that begs the question still, why would you want to be around? What are you getting out of these people? How can you associate with these people when simply because of your vibration, you should be pushing these people away and repelling them because you're not aligned with them? So that would cause me, if that was me, to ask the question, wait, what's wrong with me? What is inside me that is attracting such a person that I would feel comfortable being around them? Because it should be, it should be repellent. And I have to ask, why are you not repelling somebody if they're spiritually, you should be repelling some? Why are you attracting such people into your life? And why are you easily able to fellowship with them? I would be really questioned about that. And I would really want to examine my heart to see what's going on because that does not look good. Now, the, one of the reasons why I deal with this in the, the book, Co-Creators with God, is that I want you to get things right and aligned perfectly so you can do the co-creation with God. You can be perfectly aligned with him and get the results you want in life. See, when you're perfectly aligned with other people, especially people 
aren't doing well, they're doing evil maybe, and they don't have your best interest at heart, you're not going to create the reality you want. And this is the problem people go through life. They're creating a reality and it makes them miserable and they hate it. But they don't do anything to change it. They just keep doing the same thing every, each and every day and then wondering why the results aren't changing. Wondering why they didn't win the lottery or some magical inheritance came their way or whatever the thing is that they think is going to save them from the reality they've created for themselves. Well, my book, Co-Creators with God, will show you how to change your reality and to create the reality that you really want to live. Because many people are going through life victims of chance and time and circumstances and they just f go through life going through the motions believing that whatever happens was some divine prerogative and god's will never recognizing the fact that they are creating their day-to-day -day experiences now you may wonder well why is each and every day the same or very similar well because that's what you have faith for you believe that what happened yesterday is going to probably happen today. I mean, look, your, your very statement is that why is each day like the, the other? That's what you believe for. And Jesus said, according to your faith, be it unto you. If you believe for something, you're going to get it. And this, this goes down to the deepest places of your heart, your subconscious mind, where 95% of your decisions and your choices are made throughout the day. I deal with this in the book, Co-Creators of God, that the vast majority of your decisions each day are not consciously made. They're in your subconscious mind. Whatever program you had from about the third trimester on into about seven years old as a child's programming that you did not choose, observing your parents and friends and family and their family and whoever you looked up to that you kind of programmed yourself to follow in their position. You didn't even make a choice to do this. It was just you were kind of in that mode as a child. Now you're living that life. And you're still not making choices. Even though you may be an adult now, you're still not making the choices because your subconscious mind is making them for you. Now you may say, well, I made this choice and I did this and that. But here's the thing. Whatever choices you're making consciously, the opportunities you have and the choices you have are being limited and restricted by your subconscious mind. So you're only seeing maybe you have two options when you may really have 30 options. But you can't even see the other options because your subconscious mind programming has leaned you toward whatever it thinks you should be. So if it thinks you should be poor, if it thinks you should be fat, if it thinks you should be unhealthy, whatever it may be, whatever it is that you don't want, that's somewhere in your subconscious mind programmed in there and it's gonna keep bringing you back. So if you're overweight, you're going to go exercise, you're going to lose a bunch of weight, and you'll gain it all back. Why? That happens over and over again. People, people know that so often people go on diets, they do very well, they lose a bunch of weight, they feel great, they're healthy, and then next thing you know, you see them in six months and they're, they gained all the weight back. Why? Well, that's the reason. That subconscious mind brings them right back to that image they have of themselves, what they really believe. And sometimes through brute force and willpower, you can overcome that. But unless you deal with it, deal with that programming and get it programmed right for you, what you really, what really aligns with you now, what you really want now, so you can co-create the life you want with God, you're going to keep going back to that position. This is why affirmations are so important. It's why visualization is so important. And all these tools that are used to reprogram your subconscious mind and get you the results you want. But if you're associating with other people with the same limiting subconscious beliefs, even if you're the positive person, even if you're the person that is, is trying to do well, it's going to drag you down. Or if it, let's say it doesn't drag you down, it's going to limit you. It's going to keep you where you are instead of excelling to the next level and becoming greater and greater and greater, going from glory to glory. You're going to be stuck where you are because you can't continue to associate with those kind of people and get better results. They don't have it in them. And the fact that you're associating with them probably means you don't have it in you either because you're not giving up some of these things that you don't need to be partaking of anymore. So my friend, I would encourage you to get the book Co-Creators of God. It's going to be an absolute blessing for you to help you and deal with all the kinds of issues that people deal with in life. 
when the reality that they have isn't what they really want, but they don't see a way to change it. And things like law of attraction and all these things and affirmations even don't seem to be working for them. In that book, I show you how to make these things work for you and get the life you want. My friend, I pray this is a blessing for you. May God bless you richly.